We are back to life. We have showered, we have moisturized, we've put on lip chap, and we're ready to go to the gym. Typically, I don't always shower before I go to the gym, but on the weekends I do because I woke up late this morning, so then I did it. But then also on other weekends too, I just like to like veg in the morning, like completely. And then when I shower, it's like, okay, we've awoken, we're ready to go. So that's kind of like what I do on the weekends. Um, outfit of the day, this is going to be the gray Gymshark training crop hoodie. Um, the Whitney Simmons like little cute bow tie sports bra. Doesn't have any inserts in it, but because it's black and I'm wearing a sweater over top of it, um, you can't really see any nippage going on right now. Um, the lighter colors, I don't tend to wear unless I'm wearing something over it just because like I have the light blue and I have the beige and those ones sometimes show a little bit more nip and I'm not really about that life. Um, kudos to everyone who is because I feel like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't care. Like I should be at that stage now in my life where I don't care. Um, leggings are the Adapt, um, oh, I just, I'm just blank. Adapt Ombre, I'm literally staring at it. The gray, black, and gray, gray, whoa. I think I just had like brain damage. I don't know what happened there. Black Adapt Ombre with the gray. This one's a little bit lighter gray compared to the newer ones I just released. So these ones are the older ones. I love these ones, they're so comfortable. Um, I usually only wear the ombre leggings. I don't tend to wear the shorts too much because they are longer biker shorts and I don't look as good in biker shorts. But if you guys want the link to all the outfits, I'll put that down below so that way you guys can twin please with me in the gym. Um, in general, leg days I'm always in, usually I'm actually in shorts. Today I just felt like wearing these leggings because I like them. And then I'm always in like an oversized shirt or like a crop sweater or anything like that. So. So I basically just generalized I work out in, for leg day in anything, pretty much. Anyways, we're about to go to the gym. Um, we're gonna film a good life today. Hopefully they let me film. I'll keep you guys low key. I'm gonna put you on like a little low tripod. So nobody, nobody has to know, nobody has to know. Oh, well, I literally just got in my car and like, I honestly, I cannot wait to live in a place where I don't have snow. But thankfully, windshield wiper's going strong. So we just got to the gym. For those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, you'll probably see it. I do usually work out at like a local Good Life. The lighting here is actually horrendous. Maybe from this angle. Oh, even worse. Maybe if I just, okay, we're gonna try this. I'm in a really dark shadow, but um, we're hitting legs today. Like I said, we have our little masky mask going on and hopefully, hopefully legs feels good. Hopefully I lift some weights today that don't feel like atrociously heavy. Let's try. Jumping right into this leg day, we're gonna be starting off with squats first, just making sure everything is set at my right height. And then we're gonna get right into our warm up set with the bar only. This is strictly because I love to start off with just the bar, just to warm up the movement, as well as the range of motion, focusing on my muscle activation and then making sure whatever range of motion I work here stays consistent through all my sets. So typically I actually do a full warm up before this, but I actually forgot to film it. So next time I definitely will. But for now, I'll just explain everything in this video. So we're gonna start off with 135 for 15 reps and then we're gonna slowly increase by five to ten pounds each set aiming for a round of five to six sets so again just depending how everything feels biggest thing here that we want to focus on is just making sure that my form is staying consistent and that my knees aren't caving in I'm not butt winking anything like that um, form for me is the biggest thing so I tend to lift a little bit lighter just to ensure that's happening so right after this one my heaviest set which is 185 I'm gonna be doing a drop set and doing 135 again for as many reps as possible and again biggest thing here making sure my form is good and that I'm not sacrificing anything. And then we're gonna make sure to take off our weights, clean the bar, and then move on to the next exercise. Moving on to my second exercise, which is leg press, which is high key one of my favorites right now. We're just gonna start off with two plates each side going for 15 reps. As we go through this, we're gonna be doing a total of four sets, trying to get anywhere between 12 to 15. So just seeing how everything feels as we're moving through it. One thing to really focus on during our leg press is range of motion. So if you're a shorter person like me, sometimes that's really hard with certain leg machines. So you can always put something behind your back just to kind of increase the range of motion so you get full activation of all your lower body muscle groups. In terms of lock out, you never want to be locking out your legs on leg press. That is a for sure way to injure yourself. So just make sure there's always a slight knee bend. And then in terms of my hand placement, I like to put them on my legs personally, just as like a mental thing for me. By no means are you pushing the weight with your arms. It's more of just a guide, but you can also just place your hands on the bars right by the chair there as well. But super loving leg press lately and I love going heavy on it. Next on the list for this leg day is going to be our hip thrust. I honestly do not like hip thrust that much and I only do them on the Smith machine because one, setting them up on a barbell without a Smith machine is hella inconvenient. But two, Smith machine, I just feel like I can get a better squeeze of my glutes and I always find I get a better activation and just overall isolation of my glutes. So that's why I prefer Smith machine. I also, fun fact, never go heavy. Like you'll never catch me doing like a 300 pound hip thrust. The max I go is right here is around 185. This is because for me, honestly, when I go too heavy, it just 
feels like I'm lifting heavy weight and I can't get proper, proper sorry, activation. For today's sets, we ended up doing around four sets of hip thrust at 185, and then we just took a little bit of a break before I moved on to my next exercise, which is going to be lunges. Literally one of my favorite movements, which is lunges. Typically I'll actually do even two types of variations, but this leg day we only did one variation, which was just reverse lunges here. So you're gonna do all one side and then switch the other. We are going higher rep here for around 20 reps and a little bit of a faster tempo as well. The weight here is lighter at only 30 pounds and then I did a total of four sets. This one I did pay attention to my break time for sure. This was a 30 second break, whereas the other exercises were anywhere between 60 seconds to 90 seconds. So for lunges, main thing here, we just wanna make sure that back knee isn't actually tapping the floor there is just a little bit of space and that we're loading that front leg pushing through the hamstrings and the glutes next we're just going to finish off with our leg extensions this is the last exercise of our leg day not going to lie these look kind of funny sped up but here we did five sets of 20 with only a 30 second break this was just literally to burn out my quads at the very end because it was a quad and glute focused day and after this leg day i was feeling really good so overall super happy with all the movements we did today like you can see i don't do multiple multiple exercises i keep it pretty simple but if i would i would probably do another lunge variation probably bulgarian or rear elevated foot um so definitely check this out and if you want to try it make sure to give me a tag but this was all that I did for Saturday that was vlog worthy and then next we're gonna move into Sunday so rest of the morning was super chill we got started in our laundry cleaned our room now we're about to go grab some groceries do a little bit of meal prep and then we're gonna work out after hopefully as I'm grocery shopping training everything like that that answers some of the questions that you guys have and then I'll also take time to answer some more questions later this morning but for now we're on our way to Walmart because that's where I decided to get my groceries today because I also want to pick up a specific card game that's at Walmart as well as a couple board games potentially so excited let's go so currently on our way to Walmart literally Walmart and like pretty much every other grocery store is really close to me it's about a five minute drive to everything so whether it's Longo's, Sobeys, these are all Canadian brands, TNT, Walmart, Shoppers Drug Mart, like a bunch of those things where I can get just easy groceries um, relatively close so why leave it to the last minute and just buy everything in bulk? I don't really know I should really just be doing like at least two to three trips to the grocery store a week I probably go every seven to ten days I'll be honest but that means I'm just like loading up on all of the groceries always <music> So just finished off my grocery haul. I'm gonna show you guys when I get home. I mainly just got protein. I actually didn't get as many like vegetables and stuff like that as I thought I was gonna get because I actually have a lot more of that stuff at home than I thought. Plus I wasn't like really needing it because I can always go get groceries again. It kind of forces me to go as many times as I should be going a week. Um, just keep everything fresh and that way I don't have to get a lot of frozen stuff. I did get more frozen fruit this week because I did want to make more smoothies um, because I think that would taste good. So yeah. So back home from the grocery store and I'll just talk through all the groceries I got. I realized I have a lot more vegetables in my fridge than I do that I bought. So it kind of looks like I didn't get any vegetables. I got baby bok choy, which is a favorite of mine. It's like a nice green veg. And then I got a bunch of frozen fruit. So these are just the sliced strawberries and bananas, but I also got kiwis, peaches, and mango. I also got fresh bananas too, just to put on oatmeal or toast if I want to. I'm gonna start my morning with just like warm lemon water because I feel like that's like soothing in the morning, um, especially because in the winter here, it's so dry. Like just to have like a nice cup of like warm like lemon flavored water would be nice because I have stopped drinking coffee for probably the last, I would say almost like two months. Not because I was like, oh, I want to stop drinking coffee. It's just like, I just ended up stop stopping it i don't know um for at least the time being so just having something warm and i don't really like tea too much so that's why i'm like mm, lemon water um and then i got high protein greek yogurt because greek yogurt is like probably one of my favorite snacks so i might as well make it high protein this i've been looking for for so long i was at shopping at sobeys and longos but at walmart they have so many of them so if you're canadian walmart's where it's at cilantro and then like i'm so lazy i got already peeled garlic because i just don't feel like peeling it um and then i got two cartons of egg and raw fish oh sorry not raw fish um two cartons of eggs and then two packages of chicken breast i'm not going to show it on here because i know some people get grossed out by raw meat um but just know i have that and then i also have a white what is it pacific white shrimp um that's frozen so it's really easy to 
cook up and make into like a stir fry or a meal or anything like that. So now that you guys have seen like a rough grocery haul for me, this one was actually a little bit of a smaller one than I was expecting. Um, but just to give you guys an idea of what I get and then also answer some questions. So first off, am I lactose intolerant? I am not. I do have cheese and I do have dairy. I just choose to have like the almond milk and oat milk as just like an actual just preference of taste. Um, and then in terms of like, do I eat things like pastas or breads and stuff like that? Although there was no pasta or bread in this grocery haul, I definitely have gotten pasta in the past. Um, I'm just, again, like I measure it. As long as it fits in my macros, I allow myself to eat it. I'm not someone who's like, no, you can't have it. Um, when it comes to like junk food and stuff like that, like I don't keep it in my house because if it's not in my house, then I can't snack on it and it's just easier for me to stay on track. So I don't tend to let myself buy like a bag of chips or like jello or granola bars that are full of sugar or stuff like that. I just tend to stay away from those aisles completely. I just don't even go down them. Um, the only thing you'll see me get me, oh wow. The only thing that you really see me get from that aisle is like the rice cakes. I am a fan of like the Quaker rice cakes, like the, um, everything bagel there it is or the tomato basil really good um but other than that that's pretty much it from those aisles and then in terms of fish versus like chicken and stuff like that because i do know i had said that i was going to try pescatarian i didn't mind doing pescatarian it just honestly was more of a lifestyle thing for me it ended up having to change my like lunch prep to being a lot longer and then my break was a little bit shorter that i had like time off to myself so for instance i would have to like reheat my food in the oven which took longer than like zapping it in the microwave so just something like that. So that's why I kind of went back to getting chicken um, and not doing full-fledged like pescatarian. So I am eating more seafood. Like I'll still have my salmon and my shrimp. Like I have salmon pre-cooked in my, in my fridge right now. I um, picked up shrimp today and then I have a lot more eggs. So egg, like whole eggs as well as egg whites too. And then the last question that I always get is, am I vegan? Will I ever become vegan? So I'll never say never. Like maybe there's gonna be a point in my life where being vegan will actually fit my lifestyle a lot better. Cur or like, not lifestyle, but like my body a lot better. Um, currently right now, I just find that some of the higher protein vegan options just tend to not agree with my system as well. Um, I get bloated, I have like some digestive stuff going on that I'm just not a really big fan of, of having that as like an everyday thing for me. So that's why I tend to stick to more of the chicken, the eggs, the salmon, everything like that, where I know it's easy for my body to digest, digest sorry and I'm used to it. So as of right now, I don't see myself going vegan, but again, never say never. So I do want to address that question because I know it's a very popular question. Um, going on with anything else, I think that's it. My biggest advice when it comes to nutrition and following something is just, again, buying your groceries at the beginning of the week, meal prepping everything for yourself. So that way you can like feel prepared on track. If you go in the fridge to grab a snack, it's like you already have pre-made X ready. So you know you can just measure it out or you can just like do eyeballing your portions and eat it. And that way you kind of are like, the things that are easy to snack on like chips or anything unhealthy that's easy to grab for, you're making the healthy option just as easy to grab for too. So that'd be my main piece of advice. And then also just like make it realistic for you. Like if you want to start out being like, I'm going to eat clean three out of four days of the week. I'm going to eat clean four out of, out of the, sorry, three out of the seven days a week or four out of the seven days a week, gradually make it easier for yourself. I personally say if you go in like, oh my gosh, seven out of seven, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, it often just becomes so much and like, yeah, you smash the first week because you're so motivated. But down the road, third, fourth, fifth week, you start to get a little bit like, oh my gosh, this is so much work, this is so grueling. And you want like longevity in anything that you do. So just really focus on creating a routine that's something that can you can like easily track the small wins and that can keep you motivated to go longer with everything. Um, would be my biggest advice. And then also just making sure that you're just like, you're fueling your body with color. That's the easiest way to put it. You wanna make sure that you're having lots of color on your plate. You're not just eating like beige, like fucking, oh, I didn't mean to swear, like pasta or anything like that. You just wanna make sure that you're, you know, fueling your body with the right thing. So that's my little, I guess like Q&A portion about food. Um, hopefully that was helpful. And then we're actually gonna get ready to work out. We're gonna put all this stuff away first. Then we're gonna get ready to work out and hit some back. Uh, oof, I'm nervous to see what my pull-ups are at today. We're gonna see. Um, this is literally what I use. Rose Lemonade 22, it's stimulant-free. The reason why I like stimulant-free pre-workout, especially in the evenings like this, cause it's 5.35, gym closes at eight, so I'm like, gotta get going, um, is because if I drink stuff with um, too much caffeine in it later in the day, I just end up staying up too late. So I use this. And then the other one I use is creatine in there. And then peaceful sleep, I don't use too, too often. It's more like later, um, not later, sorry. It's more like 
on the off chance that I know I'm gonna need more sleep, I'll use this. And then they also have their pre-workout Wisdom, both the blueberry and lemonade flavor, as well as the cherry lime. This one's really good. And then we have the Rooted Energy. I actually haven't tried this one yet. I have to try it. That's a good reminder. And then I have their new stimulant-free electrolytes, watermelon flavor, and then their blue raspberry electrolytes as well. So those are some more of their products. I tend to use the rose lemonade the most, the pre-workout creatine, and their grass-fed protein the most. That's just like my favorites. Um, but yeah, cheers, and I'll see you guys next at the gym. Starting off our back day with pull-ups. So you guys know that one of my goals is to get 25 pull-ups, but lately my numbers have not been hitting the way I want them to. So originally I'd hit up to 19, but we went back down to like 14 to 15. So today we actually only did one set of 10 followed by six sets of five so that we were well over that 25 mark of body weight. And then we went over to the assisted pull-ups and just repped out a ton of pull-ups here. So we did sets of around 15 to 20, ideally I was hitting 20 and then on the last two sets I only hit 15. So we did do five sets in total here. Again, just pure volume with these pull-ups. With the assisted ones, I am focusing more on using my lats, really squeezing, get that chin all the way up above the bar. I'm using just a 25 resistance here, or I guess assistance um, for this machine. And then you can also do this with a band if you don't have assisted pull-up machine, that's also an option. But honestly, right now, pull-ups is one of my main goals. So you're gonna be seeing these in a ton of my workouts. And I always, as of right now, will start off with them because when I was doing them last, I think that's what put a big hinder on my goals in terms of my pull-ups. I just was not getting the numbers I needed to for the endurance when I was doing them at the end of my workouts. Moving on to our second exercise, which is a lat pull down. And we are here for a little bit because I actually ended up doing a ton of sets here as well. I like using this attachment rather than the straight bar with just the one cable because I do have a slight imbalance in my lats. My left one is a little bit stronger than my right. So just making sure that both arms are working and having to pull the weight down so that way nothing is favored. In terms of this one, I'm doing around five, five to six sets of lat pull downs at 12 to 15 reps each. So that's what I mean we were here for a while. In terms of grip, we did do this wide grip right here but then we also did side saddle and then I did another variation but I forgot to film it because I filmed it on my iPhone instead but it was basically alternating between neutral grip and wide grip again just really doing a lot of sets here because I want that endurance to transition into my pull-ups lighter weight here as well because I do want to focus on the squeeze again I am someone who likes to go a little bit lighter in my workouts just to make sure I'm doing the proper activation and using the right muscle groups side saddle lap pull downs if you guys have not done these yet 100% add these into your workout they are one of my favorite variations of lap pull down and I get the best isolation from it Moving on to bent over barbell rows. Typically I'll do these with dumbbells, but for some reason today I was like, let's do a barbell, it's been a while. So just warming up super light with the bar, just getting that range of motion, that track of movement down. And then overall for these reps, I went relatively light. We did four sets of 10 to 12. And I know the bar is pretty light, but that's also just because I had done pull-ups with a large amount of volume, as well as lat pull-downs with a large amount of volume. So just making sure that I wasn't gonna be overdoing it. I'd rather just focus on the contraction and nice and tight as I move the movements rather than trying to lift heavy and potentially injuring myself with such fatigued muscles. Last two exercises of this back workout is going to be cable straight arm pull downs as well as kneeling cable single arm rows. One of my favorite supersets and I definitely added in a lot at the end of my workouts. For the straight arm cable pull down, you basically just wanna make sure that your lats are doing all the work and that there's not a ton of movement in your upper body. And then for the single arm row, we just wanna switch it to a handle attachment and then just making sure we get a full stretch in that lat, letting it release and then pulling that elbow in nice and tight next to our body. So again, one of my favorite supersets to do at the end of the back day and there's tons of isolation on those lats. In terms of what we're gonna finish with, lately I've been loving finishing with arms. So we're gonna do seated curls, so much harder than standing curls. So again, if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a try. Here we just did them nice and slow. I like to go light on bicep curls because in all honesty, you don't have to go super heavy, but we just really wanna focus on proper ranges of movement and making sure everything comes up nice and controlled. And that's today's back day. All right, now it's time for the question portion. I know I've answered some during like the workout slash grocery haul, but now we're gonna do some just like other random lifestyle or just like other generic questions. So as you can see, we have, oopsies, wow. I just, I just exited out of literally everything. As you can see, there are tons of questions to go through. I think I've answered some of these, um, again, in my workout videos as well as that grocery haul, but I will be going through a lot of them right now. So let's 
get started. This has actually been on my list to do for a very long time. I've always wanted to travel to Houston um, or Texas in general. So going to either Austin, Dallas, or Houston has been on my list for a while. So I think I'm gonna probably pick the central one, which correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's Dallas. And I would love to host a workshop there, but I also wanna visit different parts too, cause I just hear that like, it's a really fun area. I know people's favorites um, from what I've heard has been Austin and Dallas, but I have a lot of people that I know, I shouldn't say a lot of people, I don't know that many people, but I have a couple people that have been following me on Instagram for a while who are from Houston, who I would love to meet in person um, and just kind of hang out and get to know just as like people, because we've been just like friends through Instagram for a long time. So to definitely go to Houston would be really, really fun. Um, so both Francis and Sandy asked what my favorite movie is. So my favorite movie is anything Marvel. I love Marvel. Every single superhero movie I've probably seen multiple times. My favorites are the most recent Spider-Man movie because I just love it. It was just like nostalgic because I don't know, I've been watching like superhero movies for a very long time. So just seeing all those Spider-Mans come together because I watched Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and now Tom Holland. Um, so having them all come together into one movie, I was like, Mind blown. The entire time I was sitting there with uh, one of my best friends, Christine, AKA Pang, and we were both like the entire movie, we were like, ah! like we were so excited. So definitely Marvel, um, in particular the Spider-Man movie, but I also really like all of the Thors because I find them just really funny. Um, and then I would say my other type of favorite movie is just kind of like feel good movies. I like ones where like, it's very simple, like just like Marvel, where it's like good, easy pull. Like it's just, I like those movies, the feel good ones. So this question I get a lot and it has to do with my smile and I know people who've been following me for a long time know why I smile so much about my videos but if you are new to my page you'd be like, why is this girl so happy all the time? But as you can see, like I do post it in my stories a lot, like when I do my challenges, when I do my sequences, they are never like an easy one and done. And they usually take me a while, at least like anywhere between like 15 to an hour. Um, so when I finally get it the way that I wanna present it, um, I always get super excited because during the sequence, I typically know when it's like, I've done it the way I wanna do it. So I'm already smiling before I even finish the video. So for me, it's just like honestly a really proud moment because as a creator, you wanna be proud of what you're putting on your platform or even what you're sharing or whatever. Um, so it's just like a really happy moment for me and that's why I'm always smiling. Very common age question, but this one's actually paired with if I'd want to go to Germany one day to visit. So really quick answer, I am 26 and 100% I would love to visit Germany. In fact, I would love to visit anywhere around the world. I'm someone who definitely wants to travel and just experience. Um, I'm someone now that has gotten older, I just want to see the world. I think seeing sunsets around the world would be a dream come true um, because I've been really into sunsets probably for the last year um, and I just realized that that's something that makes me really happy so just to be able to do that and travel and see the world would be really really cool. The energy question is one that I get a ton and I think a lot of people assume because they always see my stories and my videos that I must be always bouncing around flipping back flipping but typically when I'm doing my workouts um, I'm usually like head down hat on earphones in focus on my strength workouts especially if they're at a gym. I do tend to be a little bit more hyper when I am training with my friends at the as I call it, the flippy gym. Um, but when it comes to just strength training workouts, I do have energy to do my workouts, but I'm not like crazy jumping around or anything like that. Um, but in terms of getting that energy, it's just making sure that I'm fueling my body with the right foods. Um, I think I touched on that during my nutrition talk or like, I don't know, not nutrition talk, but grocery haul talk. Um, just making sure that you're fueling yourself with the proper foods. So that way you do have enough energy to be doing everything you need to do in your day, in your day, whether it's workouts, um, your job, or just like being social and having fun. Really good question. And again, I get it a lot in terms of how to balance my workouts. Cause as you guys can see from my Instagram page, I do like to fit in a lot of stuff when it comes to my workout routine. And if there was like four hours in a day that I could just dedicate to working out, I could fit in everything I wanted to. But even then I probably still wouldn't cause then you run the risk of just like overworking yourself. So for me, as of right now, my current like workout phase is focused less on my calisthenics actually and more on my strength stuff, just like lifting weights, typical weight training. Um, and then probably next month, which is like in a, in a week or two, I'm gonna start bringing back more of the calisthenic movements um, because it's also gonna be a month where I'm trying to get a little bit leaner and cut down so I can start doing less of like the Really heavy lifts when my body's a little bit heavier, not heavier, sorry, where my body's more sore and I can have better time to recover and also work on those handstand tricks. 
When it comes to learning any of the stuff that I currently do on my Instagram or anything like that, you guys should definitely check out my app. It's only $1 for the first month just to try it out, see the programs that are on there, make sure it's a good fit. Um, and then after that, it's $14.99. Or you can also choose the option of checking out my YouTube. I post stuff here as well, as well as my Instagram, Skill Drill Saturday. And then of course, you can also just work with me, whether it's one-on-one -on -one virtual training um, or online programming. So if you're interested in learning any of that stuff, start with some of like, I would say, I would say, Oh, I just stuttered so bad. I would say start with some of the more financially, what's the word? Cheaper options. I hate using the word cheap, but it's just, they're less expensive doing my app or my eBooks or my YouTube channel, my Instagram. Like, I mean, those two resources are free. Um, and then of course, if you actually want to work with me, that's when you can kind of get a little more attention, a little more fine detail um, and specific drills for exactly where you're at in your progress. Actually not in a state, I'm in a province. So I'm Canadian, I'm from Ontario and more specifically Toronto and more specifically North of Toronto. Um, I don't know, I feel like some people don't think I'm Canadian because I don't really have a super strong accent unless I say words like sorry, I sound like Canadian as you know. Um, ooh, that was my timer to wake up to do this video. So in general, cannot dance at all. Like. I would say I'm very talented in other things, dancing and rhythm, rhythm, I can't even say the word, not one of them. Like you'll never catch me. Like I remember university, I would never dance because I just don't look coordinated and I just kind of look awkward. Super attractive, I know. Um, but yeah, I'm not a dancer by any means. I was more someone who just like stand back and like, you know, even that doesn't look rhythmic, but I would bob my head. So the major question why you guys are here, you guys want this answer, this is what the clickbait was. Really quick, super simple, no, I do not have one, but you can apply down below. No, I'm kidding, uh, definitely don't do that. I have had a, people I think would assume with a bigger account that you would have a ton of DMs. They don't. And this is not an invitation to get them by any means, because I think I've done a really good job and I'm very proud of myself that I've created a professional space where people don't ask or like inquire about those things too much. Um, the only time they really do is when I host these like Q and A's, but simple answer, I do not have one right now. Um, it's just like not a priority. I'm not like actively looking, um, nor am I like, oh my God, like I wish. Um, I'm just really happy with where I am right now and kind of like where my business is going and I think I'm just someone who's not scared to be alone. I really like my alone time actually, probably a little bit too much where I'm just like super comfortable where I am with my business and traveling and stuff like that. Like I'm even taking the steps, like I said earlier in this video to like want to travel alone where I'm like, I don't need anybody. Um, but eventually one day when my lifestyle fits and when I find someone who just meshes with it and like helps me build towards what I'm going through and is supportive and I can be supportive and something like that. I think that's when things will just fall into place and be beautiful and magical like a Disney movie or a Marvel movie and things will just work out the way they're supposed to. A hard no on this one. I'm actually, so music, dancing, drawing, anything artistic, I cannot do. I know my areas of talent, I am not talented in those areas, very unfortunate. Actually, I don't know. To be honest though, I would give up a lot to be able to sing because I think it would be so cool. Imagine just like walking around and like singing and sounding good and not like you're, you know, almost choking or something. Like I just, I feel like that'd be really cool. Current favorite right now would probably be pull-ups, um, mostly because that's the one that I'm working towards the most. And I'm just forcing myself to like it because I really want to get 25. And then my other favorite movements are any type of lunge. You will see in my programs, lunges, I love them. And then a shoulder press, because we all know I love shoulders. So those are my three favorites. One, because I have to work them, and the other two, because I genuinely really like them. This is a good question. I honestly think hard work does beat talent. I really do, um, because I know so many people who were naturally talented and just didn't put in the hours, didn't put in the work. And yeah, they ended up doing relatively well, but I know people who worked really, really hard and they surpassed them. So if you're someone where, especially in sports too, when you're younger and you see someone and the coach goes, oh, they're naturally talented. The, does that mean, you know what I mean? Like you can be, you can make yourself naturally talented. I think this is a really good example. When you go and work at something, it just becomes natural for you to do. But it wasn't natural before. Like backflips to me, natural to do. When I was first learning them, when I was little, I was I was falling on my face. Like you can train hard, work hard, and make yourself naturally talented. 
course it takes work, it takes time, but you can do it. And I really do think hard work does be natural quote unquote talent. My dream, I feel like I'm at like a pageant where they ask you like, what is, what do you want in the world? Um, my dream is to honestly just continue doing what I'm doing and having fun with it. As long as whatever I'm working towards is like fueling my like passion, my happiness. That's what I really want to do as cheesy as it sounds. Um, but I also like, I figured this out and I think I've mentioned sunset so much during this video, but if I can retire and by retire, I mean just like work when I want to work, do whatever I want to do um, by the early ages of like mid thirties, forties, that's my goal. And then to just be able to like see a sunset every evening. That would be my goal is to be able to work when I want to work, follow my passion, follow my dreams, be able to help people and then watch a sunset every single night. That would be my dream. The best way to stay consistent because I can 100% agree. And I think I answered someone in a DM recently about this. She was asking because she was a student and she had lots of midterms, exams, work, etc. Plan out your week. I actually have an organizational video that's posted right before this one about how, or I, how about, ooh, I can't even organize my own words, about how I organize my schedule. I literally have a monthly calendar and a weekly calendar. And then I have like my watch and my phone that has like my daily calendar. So I am, scheduled out literally to a T, like literally. So that's how I stay organized and make sure I have time for things that like, I wanna make sure I get done in the day. So even today I blocked out time to film, to film, words are so hard today, to film this Q and A. So I would say the more, as stupid as it sounds, the more you get injured, the more you like learn about yourself. That's not to say go injure yourself, but it's just like when you get injured and you're set back and you're just put in a place of like, you have to like really sit there and reflect like, why did I get injured? What could I have done to prevent it? How am I gonna recover? How am I gonna make it back? Those kind of questions really make you like look at your own training and look at like your own habits and they make you a better person. Um, so for instance, when I was in university and I had concussions, I was more along the lines of like, oh, it's like concussion, it's whatever. And then when I had gotten my second one, I was a little bit older, I was in say fourth year and I was like, Hold the phone because this is my brain we're talking about. Like we have to be really careful about this. How do I get into the situation again? Why am I so sensitive now? Like stuff like that, where I was a little bit more grown up and mature about injuries, that it wasn't about getting back right away to where I was before, it was getting back smarter. So that way things like this wouldn't happen again, that I was being a lot more careful with my body because we only have one and especially your brain, um, you have to be really careful with, but also like an injury that I had um, earlier last year, like in, I guess late last year in December, 2020, 2020 I think it was actually, I had really badly sprained my ankle and I was doing the dumbest thing in the world. I never showed you guys that injury. I just was like updating you on pictures and stuff like that. I flipped off of like, an, a surface that was like two stories high onto a soft crash mat and rolled my ankle on the landing. Ways to avoid that? Don't go do what your friends do. Like my friends flip off of stuff all the time. I don't like flipping off of things because I often over rotate because I'm just like, I just have always been my own body weight on the same surface, nothing elevated. So why I decided to flip off something that was two stories high? Stupid. Um, so again, just learning a lot about yourself and things that you need to be doing. Like don't get caught up in the moment with your friends. Really sit down and be like, what's smart for you? So that way you stay safe. That way your body stays like healthy. So my shoe size, my feet, my, my feet, um, they are size kids two to three. I fit into both. So if I wear my thinner socks, I fit into a kid's size two for a lot of things. But if I wear like these Gymshark ones are a little bit thicker, those ones I fit into a three. Um, and then I fit into a woman's five if they're heels. And if they're not heels, then I need an insole. So for me, sometimes buying like regular people's shoes, like, you know, like cute heels or like cute boots, often very hard because I usually have to either get thick socks, but in heels, you can't wear socks. So I just have to find a shoe that like runs really small. I started training, I actually get this question a lot in my DMs and I kind of try to explain it the best I can like in Spark Notes, but I'll go a little more in depth here. So I started training gymnastics when I was really young, probably when I was in grade or kindergarten actually. And then I quit really briefly, did ballet for a year and was like, this is so slow, I do not like it, I hate it. And then I went back to gymnastics and did it all the way up until grade eight retired because my back was really bad at the time. Um, and then I did dance throughout high school. Sorry, no, I did cheerleading. No, I did dance. I did dance throughout high school and I did cheerleading for my high school team, but it wasn't really cheerleading. It was like really bad. 
And then in university, I took up cheerleading. Um, that was a much higher level, much better team. And then I also, that's when I got into fitness. So this is where my fitness journey starts. First year of university, because I wanted to become a better athlete for my like my cheerleading team. Because I felt like low key, I was a really weak link and then I wasn't pulling my own weight. So I wanted to make sure I was like the best possible athlete um, that I could be. And then I started to really just like get into fitness and started to seriously work out probably in my fourth year and then took it really seriously in 2019 when I decided to compete in a bodybuilding competition in the fitness division. 2019 was also the year that I got introduced to calisthenics and all my friends. And then basically post June 2019, I have been calisthenics based majority of the time as well as strength training. So I've always done a hybrid between the two. Will I ever compete in the fitness division as a pro? Cause I do have my pro card. I don't know. I at first I was really set on competing in fall of 2022, but because our gyms closed down for majority of like the winter, I just feel like if I do compete, it'll be at a time where I just am more in love with that style of training. Right now, I kind of really like the flexibility I have with my flips as well as like the strength training and something like bodybuilding, like you can go back to at any age. Like a lot of the competitors right now are like in their mid to later thirties. So I'm only 26. I have so much time if I ever want to explore that realm of fitness again. But for right now, I'm really happy with calisthenics and I want to compete more in calisthenics. Nicknames that I actually don't mind. T, little T. That's kind of it. Tea baby, mm, not really like that one, I lied. I think someone called me that one time and I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh. Um, Tay, I'll live with, but I don't love it. Tay May, absolutely freaking hate. I hate Tay May. Um, Tay Tay, no. And I think that's pretty much all the nicknames for Taylor. There's not many other ones. No one ever called me like Lore. Um, yeah. Oh, and my friends call me friend. Like you guys know, I'm sure you've heard me. I'm just like, hey friend, what's up friend? Like I'll greet people like that who are my friends, typically girls, because I don't really think I've done that to any of my guy friends. But yeah, friend is also a nickname that people call me and that I call others. I will always forever be a white sock person. I mean, one day I might mix it up, switch it up on you guys and wear like bright pink socks. What would you guys think of that? Would you guys be like, oh my God, ew. Or would you be like, oh my God, cool. I don't know. But yeah, always white socks, always in socks. Reason being, I hate feet. I hate feet. And I don't know if it's like a like phobia, but like if someone's foot touches me, it's in immediately no, ick, right away. I just cannot. And it's not because I'm like, ew, you must be dirty. It's just like, I don't like clammy, sweaty, dry ugh, feet touching me, anywhere near me. It could, it could touch my foot and I would still be like, ew. It could, yeah, mm, no, so socks, always. One of the things for sure this year that will mean the most or a goal for me that will mean the most is when I hit a specific financial goal that I've outlined for myself. And that's because when I hit that goal, like yes, it's money-based, but what it really means, it allows me to achieve or have time to do my other goals that aren't money-based, which is like spend time with my friends and family, being able to like be there for my nieces and family, like when they're growing up and stuff, because that's definitely something that I'm missing out on right now. Um, but also just like be able to do passion projects or like travel and like just teach and maybe do workshops that aren't necessarily like you know, like income for me, like they're more just like fun. So I don't have to be charging like the amount that I want to be charging for them. It can just be like, I'm doing this because I genuinely want to go here, give back and like help this small business or help this gym, stuff like that. I think for me, that's like going to be something that when I'm able to do that, I'm going to be like really, really proud of myself and really, really happy. Um, another goal, this one's like compared to the one that I just said, this one's going to sound so like meh, but also when I can afford my own dog, that will also make me very happy. Team dog every single freaking day. However, I was contemplating on getting a cat recently because cats with my lifestyle right now, I'd be able to actually afford to get one because I still wanna travel, I still wanna do a bunch of stuff. And if I have a cat, it's much easier to get someone to take care of a cat than it is a dog, at least in my like social circle and surroundings and stuff. A dog is a lot more work. And that's why like, just like time wise, I wouldn't really be able to afford to have a dog right now. Um, but always team dogs, I love dogs. But to be honest, right now I drive a Hyundai Elantra. It is, it is my car, it's my first car I ever bought myself. I bought it right when I graduated, so I was super proud of myself for being able to afford a car right out of university. I am, drum roll, getting an upgrade. I'm gonna show, I'm not, I haven't told 
anyone on my social media. I haven't really told that many of my friends either. Um, so when my new vehicle comes, which is so exciting, I hope it comes before June, but everything's so back ordered. I'm gonna do a car reveal video. And like, I'm not a car person, so if you guys are like, oh, that car's not even that exciting, it's exciting to me. And I'm excited because it's something that I looked at and I was like, that one, that's the one I want. That is the car that I want because it just, is everything I wanted. And I think that also counts as a super proud moment for myself because for me, this is something where I'm like, I'm proud of myself for being able to now upgrade my car from the first one I bought when I was uh, 20, 21, I think. A ton of split related questions in here, how to get your splits, how long it takes, where to find programs, or do I have programs, et cetera, et cetera. So March 1st is when my mobility program releases. This is a mobility, like ebook that is both upper body as well as lower body. So it has stretches for your push and pull as well as your warm up and your cool down and actual routine. And then it also has the same thing for your lower body, lower body days as well. Within that ebook, it also teaches you guys like what's the difference between mobility and flexibility, when to stretch, how to stretch, the types of stretching, how to test your mobility. So if you are someone who's looking for something mobility based, or something that's gonna help you with mobility, definitely check it out. If you're looking specifically for the splits, head over to my app because I have a full follow along splits program as well as a middle splits program on my app. And if you were someone who's just like, I just want the splits, I'm already mobile at other places, I'm just trying to get this one skill, definitely check out my app. Sometimes I'll cry. I used to, I used to be super proud being like, I don't cry. Cry. It feels so good sometimes to cry and like, ugly girl cry. Like you can really cry if you're frustrated um, or if you're set, upset about something. I feel like holding in my emotions when I was younger definitely caused me to be more impatient. Um, but now that I'm just free to like express my emotion, it makes me a lot easier to like deal with frustrating situations. And I just try to take a deep breath again, give myself a moment to relax and then I kind of handle it. Or if I need to, I'll just step away. That tends to be my frustration thing. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest things that makes me frustrated is when I feel like I'm misunderstood or that I feel like I'm being used or taken advantage of. Like that's super frustrating for me. So those are scenarios where I'm like, take a step back. Last question, oh, you couldn't even see my hand, I did this. Um, last question of today's Q&A, just because I feel like I've done so many. And if I didn't get to your question, I will be answering them later on my Instagram. I know you guys always get at me for being so delayed on it, but I will do it, I promise. In terms of what gets me motivated, this is the last question, because this is just something that everyone always asks. My friends, and I say this every single time, my friends keep me motivated to just be a better version of myself. Not only like physically with my training, but also like as a person, like emotionally and like mentally, seeing my friends evolve and becoming more mature and like being just so insightful about themselves. I'm just like, damn, I gotta get like that. Like I gotta do that. So my friends are by far the most motivating people around me. And then also just my family too. Like I look at my nieces and stuff like that, or even my sisters and stuff and my parents. And I'm just like, wow, like there's certain things that they've done, whether they're doing or that they want to do where I'm like, that's, that's, that's motivating. So friends and family are the most motivating people ever in my life at least. So that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is my first time filming myself in a commercial gym. Very scary. First time filming myself at a grocery store. Very scary. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I am gonna try to also like voice record over top of everything. So in which case that would also be my first time doing that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and comment. Comment below if you wanna see more videos like this. I am stoked to make more content on YouTube. This is something that I'm definitely for sure focusing on this year. So yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.